could when I was small and it's so picturesque. Looking Ciao and welcome to Geo's Paintbrush, where five minutes is all it takes to be blown away by one of the world's greatest artists. We're live on location in Dublin, Ireland today, a city with great public art. We consider very controversial work. The vocals called the Tart with the Cart. Molly Malone. Thanks for joining us and happy new year. Man oh man that Irish weather. Over four days in Dublin City, we had one day with a bit of sun, but mostly rain, sleet, snow, wind, and unusually cold temperatures, even for the Emerald Isle in the heart of winter. Raindrops on the camera lens in the opening that Dana shot, with Mari, Frankie, and Tony looking on. And I'm drenched. Still, we had a magical trip, and Dublin is just loaded with interesting public art, each piece with a unique story to tell, rain or shine. The Molly Malone statue in bronze was created by Irish artist Jean Reinhardt, a Dublin native and one of the world's finest portrait sculptors, in 1988. Among Reinhardt's other important works is the James Joyce bust in New York City's Public Library and the Annie Moore sculpture at Ellis Island, commemorating the first immigrant to pass through Ellis to the New World in 1892. Reinhardt's Molly Malone is located at the junction of Suffolk and Grafton Streets in the heart of Dublin near Trinity College. The piece was unveiled to commemorate the city's 1,000th anniversary back in 1988, with June 13th having been declared Molly Malone Day. But who is this young, rather busty young lady, forever pushing a fish cart and offering a little something extra too for the right price, on the corner of Suffolk and Grafton in Dublin's fair city? Therein lies an Irish tale. The song Cockles and Muscles, or in Dublin's fair city, today the unofficial city anthem, tells the tale of a tragic young heroine called Molly Malone, a fishmonger who dies an early death from fever. But that's not all. Turns out that female street vendors by day were commonly known to be prostitutes by night, who, most often out of poverty and sheer desperation, were forced to turn to selling more than fish or produce to make ends meet. Now the Irish, given the history of this tenacious little island, certainly know something about poverty, about desperation, about keeping one's spirits up in the face of oppression and adversity, not to mention the trying weather. They also know in their bones about survival and the prospect of an early tragic death. As such, this song about young and beautiful Molly Malone defiantly working the streets of Dublin to survive against all odds, well, it touched a chord in the Irish people, to the point where today, legend and reality have blended as often seems to be the case in this mystical land. Many now believe the heroine of this song, which, by the way, does not seem to have existed, at least in print, before the late 19th century, was a real Dubliner all the way back in the 1600s. The fact that there is no clear evidence for this belief doesn't seem to get in the way, which is not necessarily a problem, since one of the reasons Ireland has produced so many world-class writers over the years this tiny little island about the size of Indiana, is that the Irish seem hell-bent on making certain that dull and monotonous realities never interfere with the expression of a beautiful and powerful poetic truth. And so when contemporary Dubliners jokingly refer to Reinhardt's busty little sculpture as the tart with the cart, they do so with an affection that is rooted in their appreciation for their own long, hard history and the sense of humor that has sustained them through challenging times. Providing a physical focal point for that affection, for the deep connection with this city that was founded by the Vikings before the end of the first millennium, is what Molly Malone, as a work of art, seems to achieve. Thus, whether or not Molly ever walked God's Kelly Green Earth makes not the least bit of difference. I find it hard to imagine asking more of a sculpture that's to be placed in the public way. Reinhardt's Molly Malone is playful, yes, but it also resonates with history and myth and humor and the character of the people for whom it was made. Their ancestors sustained themselves with such humor and tenacity and with legends like this one. They endured much, from occupations by the Vikings, the Normans, and the British Empire, to famine, emigration, civil war, homegrown terrorism, and economic recession. And yet they remain stronger and more free than ever before. Given that a song inspired this sculpture, it seems appropriate to quote at least one or two stanzas. In Dublin's fair city, where the girls are so pretty, 
I first set my eyes on sweet Molly Malone as she wheeled her wheelbarrow through streets broad and narrow, crying cockles and mussels alive, alive oh. She died of a fever, no one could save her, and that was the end of sweet Molly Malone. Now her ghost wheels her barrow through streets broad and narrow, crying cockles and mussels alive, alive oh. Thanks for joining us. I can picture it like I could when I was small and it's so picturesque. Looking through the crystal ball, can you picture this? And it isn't sad.